This video demonstrates using Design in its original pattern drafting feature to digitize paper patterns. I'll first ensure that I'm working within the desired units of measurement. For me, this will be inches. And then I'll start by making a new piece by going to piece, new piece, and then entering my stitch in row gauge if I know it. Uh, if you haven't done this step yet, use the default tensions. We can add it later. If you have calculated stitch in row gauge, enter your tensions here. Click OK once you've entered your stitch in row gauge. And then select the starting geometry. I'll usually begin with the square with four points at the default dimensions of 15.7 by 15.7 inches. Ensure that neither of the mirror options are selected and name the piece. The piece will appear on the artboard and you can then go to view background image options, choose the yellow folder and navigate to the photo of the pattern piece that you will trace in designing it. There are a few options in the background image options dialog box that you can play with to get a better quality of image, but I find the default works just fine. Uh, what happens when you place the background image is that it will automatically make the pattern piece transparent and push the background image to the back in relation to the dimensions of your pattern piece. We will have to rescale this later, but for now hit OK. And we will have to pull these four initial points towards four of the kind of outermost corners of the piece we're wishing to trace. To move these points, you first have to select them to turn them green, then you can click and drag to move the points. I'm just getting a rough outline here. We will tidy things up a bit in a minute. I'll need to then add points by clicking the plus icon on the left hand side and click on the piece that I am tracing to plot and snap points to the existing pattern shape. Don't go crazy here. We're not trying to add a million points. We're just trying to emulate the curve with the fewest possible points that we can. You can delete points by using the minus tool and clicking on the points that you wish to delete. Or if they're highlighted in green, you can use the delete or backspace key to delete them as well. You cannot, unfortunately, or at least I haven't figured out how to rotate the image that you will drop into the background. So you will eventually have to rotate the pattern piece. You can turn the background image and the transparency off from the view menu. And then rotate the piece using the rotate tools on the left hand side. So I'm going to rotate this piece 90 degrees to start because I want my pattern piece laid on the background, uh, imagining as though I'm knitting from, in this instance, the sleeve hem to the sleeve cap. So anything you put in the artboard and design in it will automatically calculate from the bottom up when drafting your instructions. Once you've got your piece oriented in the desired way on the artboard, you're gonna have to do a little bit more refinement to make sure that you don't run into any unintended shaping or strange instructions uh, when you go to print. So I'm gonna align a few of these points by going to measure align points after I've selected them and then choose whether I'm aligning them vertically or horizontally, whether if I'm aligning them to a specific point or if I'll align to the average of the selected points to kind of true up my shape. I need to unfold this pattern piece across the center line of the sleeve. And to do that, I'll use symmetry, mirror vertical, and identify where design it has positioned this blue line. Here it's not in the right place, so I needed to tell design it no, don't reflect the pattern piece, so that I can move that blue line 
then I have to turn the mirror vertical off from symmetry, turn it back on, and this time I can say yes, go ahead and reflect it. It's a little bit fiddly, but this is the best way that I've been able to figure it out. With symmetry on, any changes I make to the left or the right side of the pattern piece will automatically be applied to the opposing side. Now that I'm happy with my pattern piece, I need to scale it. And to do this, I'll use the fit to length and fit to width functions in designing it. You'll need to measure the actual paper pattern where the red line is asking you to measure it. The red line will never be uh, in the point you expect it to be. So make note of where it's running off the edge of the pattern. It's really looking for the two furthest points in a straight line based on grain line uh, and the grid structure that this pattern piece is on top of. You'll do the same thing for the width. So when it's asking here for the bicep line. So I'm measuring on my paper pattern, which is only half of the sleeve, uh, underarm to center line times two, which I think is like 13.5 in this example. Um, and this will help to scale the pattern piece up to the correct proportions. You'll still need to spot check uh, using this curved ruler is the best way, and you must choose the point you want to measure between in a clockwise orientation. So if I want the underarm sleeve, uh, the underarm sleeve measurement, I need to first click on the point by the hem, then the point uh, at the underarm. Because this sleeve is reflected, I don't really need to measure the opposing underarm seam. We know it's the same. It would be helpful to measure half of the sleeve cap and then confirm if you had a front armhole or a back armhole that these two pieces would fit together appropriately. It could be that the sleeve cap could be slightly bigger if there's some easing at the cap, but depending on the fit of your garment, uh, they may be the same measurement. A couple other fine details that you might want to align as you think about knitwear pattern making in the grid structure that we knit on, um, you may want a flat portion of the bicep line, which you can do by using the align uh, points tool in the measure option, or the measure menu rather. Once you've completed your pattern making, you can print each piece in a variety of different ways. The, the garment text option is the best bet. You can use this compact format to give you a much more concise printout of the instructions. You also must record what, uh, start, what side of the machine that you're telling design it you'll start on. The instructions will not tell you this. And then you can choose to print it to your printer, send it to Microsoft Print to PDF, you can email it to yourself, send it to the DAP queue, however you choose to get it. And in reviewing the printout, you will read it quite literally. It will tell you how many stitches to cast on, when to work your increases, decreases, etc. cast on 76 stitches, and then once you knit to row 17, increase one at the left, one at the right, etc. Pay close attention. Uh, decreasing or increasing multiple stitches will require your carriage to be on the side in which you're working those increases and decreases, which means you must remember what you tell design in it All right, the starting we'll side take is. Take a look at an right. example of a recently digitized piece Spot checking and walking your patterns by comparing measurements will be pretty critical. You're going to want to make sure that if you're putting all the time into knitting these pieces, that when you block them, they seam together as expected. Make sure that you remember the rule about measuring. You've got to do this in a clockwise way. So measuring this 
armhole here for this sleeve. You must start at the topmost point and go to the endmost point 12 to 3 o'clock. It's the opposite here because we're working in a clockwise fashion. So check to make sure that all of your seams will join together neatly. So here in this example, this back armhole is 0.7 inches shorter. So you might need to do some adjusting. Oh, or I mismeasured it. Okay, I'm not worried about one tenth of an inch. As you uh, do this more and more, you'll get a better feeling for how much um, ease you're gonna need where. If you've got a pool over the head design, so here I'm measuring the neck opening. I'll have to add all these together and double the little bit of this raglan sleeve that's at the neck edge. Uh, I need to make sure that I've got enough the circumference for a head to slip through. If I put a neckband on this particular garment, whether I link it or sew it by hand, that seam is gonna have a lot less stretch than the rest of the knit structure. So I wanna make sure that I'm not gonna create a garment that won't be able to, to be worn if the head can't pass through it. So I'm looking for about 20 inches in uh, neckline circumference. That will be reduced if you put a neckband on it, of course, but uh, the cast on edge of a neckband will stretch far greater than the bound off edge will. And if it's linked together, there's not enough stretch. So you need to take some of these things into consideration. There's also a ton of points, more than are necessary, built into this piece. And designing it will uh, often give you an error uh, if you've jammed too many points into any given line segment. Straight lines and blocky curves are to be expected to some degree in knitwear pattern making, so be mindful of that when you're digitizing these pieces and don't go nuts with the points. You can still achieve a great shape using relatively few points. Remember, the resulting knit panels are never going to be this rigid either.